Thank you very much and thanks for coming out. It's, uh, it's always a pleasure to be in Friendswood. Um, I just want to say a few words about my next piece. This is uh, one more work by Johann Sebastian Bach and then we'll leave the 18th century uh, for the rest of the program. This is um, the Lute Suite number one in E minor. 
Uh, Bach wrote four lute suites. Uh, the first two were written directly for the lute. Uh, lute suite number three is actually a cello suite, and lute suite uh, number four is actually a, a violin partita. Uh, this, this lute suite is what I consider to be the serious, profound side of Bach. Um, it's also a, a very beautiful, um, but, but very deep side of Bach. Um, it's an E minor. Uh, due to the length of the program, I'm going to play just uh, four of the dance movements. It starts off with a prelude and presto. The presto is a, a fugue type of composition. And then the alaman, sarabande, and then it ends with the very famous bore. So this is uh, four dance movements from the lute suite, number one in E minor by Johann Sebastian Bach.
uh, just a few words about my next piece. Uh, this was a work by Paganini, the Italian violinist and composer. Uh, people who know Paganini would all agree that he was the greatest violinist ever to live in the history of time. But very few people know that he was also a very fine guitarist. He loved classical guitar and wrote several pieces for the instrument. The piece that I'm going to play, incidentally, is not a, um, it's not a guitar piece. This is a violin piece that I've arranged for the guitar, um, violin music that I transcribed for classical guitar. This is his very famous Caprice number 24. Uh, this is what the um, music theorists would call a theme and variation type of composition. The theme is laid out at the beginning. It's, uh, it's poignant, and you'll probably recognize it. And each variation is based on the harmonic progression of the theme. So uh, each, uh, each variation is totally different, and it's just absolutely marvelous how he creates an arc which, uh, which culminates with uh, a finale at the end. It's, it's a true, true masterwork, very well crafted. Um, after this piece will be a very, very short intermission, and then we'll continue with the second half of the program. Uh, once again, this is the Caprice number 24 by Paganini. <laughs>
Just a few words about this next music. Um, <clears throat> Sir William Walton, um, he was a British composer. Um, he, he wrote mostly orchestral music and concertos. He was into big giant gestures. Um, he also wrote a lot of film music. I have a real soft spot for Sir, Sir William Walton because um, he wrote music that was very well constructed and well put together. It was, it was very high caliber music. Great, great compositional technique, but at the same time, his music was audience-friendly and accessible. He wrote music to give pleasure to an audience, not just to impress his colleagues. It's wonderful, wonderful music, all of it. Um, these five bagatelles were written for the illustrious guitarist Julian Bream, who recorded them in 1973 and re revisited them in, in the mid-'80s, which he rarely did. A bagatelle is... Um, just a light-hearted, fun piece, um, nothing more than that. Uh, Beethoven wrote dozens of bagatelles. Uh, these, these bagatelles are not named, it's just bagatelle one, two, three, four, and five, uh, with, with the exception of number three, which he entitled Ala Palaka. A Ala Palaka. So uh, five bagatelles by the British composer Sir William Walton. <laughs>
Just a few words about this next composer, Federico Mampu. Uh, Mampu was born in Barcelona and moved to Paris at a very, very young age. He was in his 20s. And uh, in Paris, he was very much taken in by the Paris High Society. He was published by Salabert, and uh, even Eric Satie took him under his wing. He was invited to all of the uh, prestigious musicales. He would write his own music and play um, at these, these uh, very prestigious gatherings. Eventually, Mampu had to choose between Hitler's France and Franco's Spain. He chose Franco's Spain and lived the rest of his life in, Bar in, in Barcelona. He believed that um, when somebody dies, uh, that they never really leave. You can always feel their spirit. He believed that he could achieve um, maximum expression with a minimal number of notes. He wrote exclusively for solo piano with the exception of just a few songs and he actually wrote a guitar piece sweet um, he also felt that um, you could kind of relive your childhood through his music um, it, I, again due to the length of the program i'm only going to play one of these uh, one of these pieces this is the canzoni danza number 10. Um, the melody of this of this song and dance both of these melodies are taken from ancient music. Uh, a fellow who lived during the 12th century, if you can believe that, um, Alfonso X, also known as El Sabio, he wrote um, uh, dozens and dozens of what he called cantigas, which were uh, songs about the Virgin Mary. So these are uh, two, two melodies taken from his cantigas. This is the Canzoni Danza number 10, uh, based on the melodies by Alfonso X, El Sabio.
I'd like to play just a very short encore piece. This is a unique piece for classical guitar. Uh, the title is Koyumbaba by Carlo Domeniconi. Carlo Domeniconi is a guitarist and composer. He was born in Italy but lived in Istanbul for several years, so hence the Eastern Turkish sound of this piece. And this piece is also most unusual in that the guitar is tuned to a C sharp minor chord. Every string is altered except the high E string, which remains the same. So once again, this is Koyumbaba, which means the shepherd by Carlo Domenicone. Thank <laughs> you. 
Thank <laughs> you.